Hey guys, what's up? So today we're gonna be talking about the best chicken breeds for beginners. It is pouring down rain out here, so I'm literally underneath the eave of the chicken house. Okay, I know this is a really weird, abrupt kind of transition, but it was raining so hard that I decided to just come inside, get some tea, and we would go ahead and do this PowerPoint style. So, our number one chicken recommendation for beginners is the Orpington. Typically, you're going to want to go for the Buff Orpington. Orpingtons are the breed and Buff is the color. So, Orpingtons do come in other colors, but Buff is going to be your cheapest, probably easiest one to get and they're an oldie and a goodie if you are once you become experienced there are colors like splash and lavender which are considered rare breeds they're very beautiful but they're very expensive as well and you typically do have to find like a breeder that's going to be close to you in order to get your hands on one so just really quickly facts about the orpington they are a dual purpose bird meaning that you can use them for eggs or meat they grow between six and ten pounds they lay up to 280 eggs a year 22 weeks to meat size or about five months um they do tend to be broody which can be bad or good depending on your preference we love a broody hen here okay broody hens solve problems of the world um if you want to hatch chicks having a broody hen that you just stick some eggs under stick some chicks under so much easier even if you go to the feed store and you get your chicks or, or your breeder or wherever you're getting your chicks and you get your little chicks and you take them home to the mama who's broody and just stick them under her she'll most likely raise them and it will save you so much headache and hassle you don't have to worry about cleaning you don't have to worry about heat lamps you don't have to worry about anything like mama hen does it all we've done it several times we've even had hens that have disappeared and hatched babies like out in the woods and brought them back um and they've done great so just highly recommend a broody hen but if you're really somebody who's like doesn't care about hatching eggs and you just want egg production having them grow broody means they're not going to be producing for you and they're just going to be trying to like sit and hatch eggs and if they don't have an egg to hatch they can actually like starve themselves and die so sometimes you have to like break the broodiness um and it can be a whole thing so depending on what your purpose is in the future you may or may not want a breed that tends to go broody so orpingtons are also super friendly they're probably the friendliest chicken overall in terms of all the breeds we've ever had we've had chickens for like 20 years and consistently orpingtons tend to have a really great personality they're good with kids um the roosters can go either way they can be nice or mean but they have a reputation for being somewhat nicer than other roosters um but overall just they're really really nice and then as far as like noise, they tend to be very quiet chickens and the roosters for Orpingtons have a reputation of being the quietest roosters that you can get. So if you are in a, I don't want to say urban area because I don't think they allow chickens in most urban areas, but if you're in an area where you have neighbors that are not going to appreciate a loud rooster, but you want to get a rooster, uh, Orpingtons are really great and then as far as weather goes they do well in cold rainy weather we've never had a problem with them here but they may have a harder time in really hot weather with that being said if you live somewhere with cold and warm weather don't feel like you can't get an Orpington you may be able to pull it off as long as you have the ability to keep the chickens cool um, whether that is like maybe putting a fan in a shaded coop or offering some sort of ice water or something like that there are different ways you can cool chickens in the summer Number two is Rhode Island Red. Now, the Rhode Island Red breed is one of those breeds where people will say you can't go wrong if you get Rhode Island Reds. They are not my number two pick, but they are a lot of people's number one pick. And the primary reason for that is that they lay up to 300 eggs a year. So they are an extremely prolific egg laying chicken as far as dual purpose breeds go. Um, you can also use them for meat, obviously dual purpose, but they are slightly smaller than other larger breeds like the Orpington. Um, they don't tend to get broody, which some people really like. Like I said, if you want to raise chicks, a broody hen is amazing. If not though, 
then you're going to want to go with a non-broody breed and those can be hard to find in the dual purposes um they are friendly they can be a little pecky with like really small children um they can also be more aggressive with like their flock like they can be pushier they also have more like character in that way though you know because like if you look at like an orpington they're super mellow super laid back rhode island reds are a little bit more like you know friendly but ambitious maybe um they can also be noisy which goes along with their personality their personality to me is not as appealing as like an orpington but some people really love them it just kind of depends on your preference and um as far as also like personality goes though Ro rhode island red roosters can be like some of the meanest roosters so i mean we had a rhode island red rooster that everyone was scared of grown adult men were scared of that rooster he was huge he was mean we could not get anywhere near the hen house he was the worst um he did a good job of protecting his hens though which is their purpose so uh they are very noisy birds and they do well in cold rainy weather but because they are a little lighter they're going to do better in warmer climates as well than a breed like the Orpington would. So if you get have an area that gets really hot, a Rhode Island Red would do better than a, a heavier chicken. Number three is the Easter Egger. Easter Eggers are also sometimes labeled as Americana, but Americana are a rare breed of chicken. So typically if you're at like your local feed store and you see an Americana, it's going to be an Easter Egger because Americanas are going to be priced a lot higher. I mean, if you see an Americana priced for like 20 bucks, then it probably actually is what it says it is but um, if it is cheaper then you're most likely buying an easter egger but it's all good because easter eggers are a great chicken they are an egg laying breed um, so they're a little bit smaller coming in at five to seven pounds and laying up to 280 eggs a year so a nice prolific breed um, they are a mixed breed chicken so they're not recognized by any like poultry groups here in the united states but the mixing of the breeds has resulted in these really fun colored eggs. So you can get eggs that are pink, blue, green. They just lay like a variety of egg colors depending, you know, on the breeding. They are not broody and super friendly, super chill, super calm. These ones kind of, to me, were like the Orpingtons. They look so cute too. They have such cute little faces. Um, roosters, like all roosters, can be aggressive. They don't have the reputation of being like super aggressive like Rhode Island Reds do, at least not in my experience. Um, but they're also not like super mellow like the Orpington roosters can be or at least have the reputation for being um they also do well in cold rainy weather and also heat because they are a smaller chicken they do have a lot of feathers though so they still need proper like shade and areas to get cool Number four is a Bard Rock, also known as the Plymouth Rock. This is another dual purpose breed. We've talked about a lot of those because those are like the dual purpose heritage type breeds are some of the best breeds for beginners to start out with because they're just hardy birds that do their job well. And that's basically what the Bard Rock is. They're a really cool looking bird. They've got like this black and white pattern to their feathers that looks really fun. Um, and like I said, they do their job well. They lay 280 eggs a year. They are a dual purpose breed. They're quiet, which is handy. Um, I think the roosters can go either way, friendly or mean. The chickens themselves are known for being friendly, but I wouldn't say that they're as friendly or as laid back as some of the other breeds. Um, the Easter Egger and the Orpingtons are definitely more friendly in, in our experience, which everybody's going to have a different experience because it definitely depends on the personalities of the birds that were the parents, right? So it can be really variable but currently our barred rock are the least friendly out of any of the chickens that we have and not that they're skittish but the orpingtons will literally just like stand around my feet when i let them out in the morning the barred rock take off on a mission to find their first grubs like they don't really care so i mean for our purpose of eggs and like having like a, a homestead type chicken they're a great breed but if you are looking for like pet quality from our experience they're not that great but on the other hand i've heard other people like in homesteading forums and groups and things say that these are some of their favorites in terms of being friendly um, chickens so if you see some i would say you can't really go wrong with the barred rock 
And number five is the Australorp. Now, we have not had an Australorp in many years just because no one around here sells them. Um, but when we did have them, they were a great bird. They do tend to be a little bit more on the shy side. So they still want attention, but you kind of have to earn their trust. They're not going to be the very first ones to come running up, most likely, unless you really work with them. But they're not like our current experience with the bard rock where they kind of just don't care it's more so just that they're shy so um yeah a great breed they're also quiet and they lay up to 300 eggs a year which is phenomenal for a dual purpose breed so if you're able to get your hands on an australorp go ahead and grab one i think most places these are easy to find i don't know why it's been so hard for us to find them here um and obviously hatcheries have them we try to stay away from hatcheries but it is an option and uh, yeah, so those are the five best breeds of chicken for beginners that we're going to recommend today. There are other breeds that may be better suited for you, but for the most part, if you're looking for either an egg layer or a dual purpose breed, these are all really great breeds to get started with. And if you're not sure which one is like the right breed for you, don't be afraid to grab more than one breed of chicken. In fact, most backyard chicken owners that I've seen have multiple types of chicken as long as you're not planning on like breeding them for show or something like that where you need to have them separate there's no reason you can't have multiple breeds together all right so those are the top chicken breeds for beginners if you liked this video want more videos on chickens homesteading gardening etc go ahead and subscribe you can also like this video that'd be really awesome and help us out a lot and we'll see you next time bye